This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this retro text effect using Inkscape. And the font I'll be using in this tutorial is called Leto, and it's a free font, so go ahead and download and install that before opening Inkscape. I'll have it linked in the description of the video, and then we'll be good to get started. So um, I'm going to open up Inkscape here. By the way, if, if you'd like to know how you could update Inkscape's appearance with this dark theme and these new icons, I'll have a link to that information in the description of the video. So the first thing we're going to do is go to File, Document Properties, and just set up our document for work. I'm going to set the display units for pixels, PX. I'm going to turn off the, the visibility of the page border. And over here where it says background color, I'm going to click on that. And under the HSL tab, I'm going to take this L row over here and just slide this to the left a little bit to make the background gray. Maybe 166 like that. And we can close out of it. And we can close out of that. And then up here, we want to turn off the uh, enable snapping. We want to turn that off for this tutorial. View, custom, zoom in at one to one. And then we'll open up the Align and Distribute menu with this button up here. We're going to want last selected chosen from this drop down. And then we'll open up the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu with that button there. And um, the first thing we're going to do is create our text. So I'm going to grab the text tool over here, click on the canvas, and using all caps, I'm just going to write, um, I'm going to use the, uh, the uh, Inkscape slogan, which is Draw Freely. I'll write Draw there, and then I'll click on the canvas over here to create another text object and I will write freely. I'll go to the select tool. I'm gonna to click and drag over both of those text items. Go to the text editor up here. Oops, that went into the other monitor. Okay, there we go. And the font we're gonna be using, I'm just gonna click on one of these fonts here and start typing in L-A-T, Lato, there it is. And I want the heavy, the heavy black version of it. Go ahead and click apply and close out of that. And I'm going to click off of that to, to deselect everything. I'm going to put these two close to each other like that. And click and drag over both. Then hold control on the keyboard and just click and drag to scale it up like that. And I'll click off of that to deselect everything. I'm going to take the word draw and just make this a little smaller. I'm going to hold control and then click and drag one of the corner arrows to scale it down so it locks to proportion. Like that. I'll put this off to the left so just a little bit. And what I want to do now is turn these from text objects to actual vector paths. So to do that, I'm going to click and drag over both of those, and I'll go to Path, Object to Path, and I'll click the Ungroup button to ungroup them into individual layers, letters and click off of it to deselect everything. Now, there's just one little thing here I'm going to do. I'm just going to change the spacing a little bit. I don't like the spacing between these letters. It doesn't look consistent. So I'm going to hold Control on the keyboard and roll up the mouse wheel to zoom in. And I'm just going to hold control and click and drag these letters over a little bit just to change the spacing so that they look a little more uh, even, evenly spaced out, even if they have to touch a little bit like that. That's pretty good. Okay, I'll do the same thing over here with this word. I'm just going to hold control and bring these letters a little closer together. Take that one, put that there, and then finally I'll take this one here, put that there. Maybe I'll bring the A over a little bit. That's pretty good. Okay, so now I'll press one on the keyboard to zoom out to 100%. What I want to do is click and drag over the letter over the word draw, so we have all of those selected, and we want to unify that all together by going to Path Union, and I want to click and drag over all of this and make that white. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on this again to get the rotation handles. And then I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and grab this top right corner rotation handle and rotate this clockwise three steps while holding control. So we'll go one, two, three, like that. And I'm actually going to zoom out a little bit now. I'm going to hold control and roll down the mouse wheel a couple of times. I want to take this object, right click that, and duplicate it. And then hold control and just click and drag this down about this far, like that. And I'm just going to make that red just so we can differentiate it from the other object like that. Bring that down maybe further. And it's important you hold control while bringing it down so it locks it onto the vertical axis. Then we can click off of that to deselect everything. Now I'm going to take just the word draw and I'm going to hold control and just bring this up into the word freely like there, uh, right about there. And now what I'll do is I'll click and drag over everything, click on it again to get the rotation handles, and then hold control and rotate it three steps counterclockwise to get it back into its horizontal position. So we'll go one, two, three, like that. And then click off of it to deselect everything. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to import a retro style color palette into Inkscape because these are the specific colors I want to use for this tutorial. If we don't use these specific colors, it doesn't really work right. So I'll go ahead and link this. It's a PNG image. I'll link it in the description of the video. Go ahead and download it and, or just copy and paste it into Inkscape. I'm just going to go to File, Import, and here it is right here, RetroColors.png. Go ahead, uh, we're going to embed it, go ahead and click OK, and there's our retro color palette. These are the colors we're going to be using for this tutorial. So uh, I'll put that off to the side, click off of that. What I want to do now is click on the word draw, the white word up here, and then hold shift and click on the red word down here, and I'll go to extensions, generate from path, extrude. And up here where it says mode, we're going to want polygon selected. And if you go ahead and click apply, you'll see it creates it creates a great big mess of lines and transparency, but that's okay because what we're going to do now is I'm going to go to the dropper tool with that selected. I'm going to go to the dropper tool, which is, where is it? It's over here. I just usually press D on the keyboard to grab that. And I'm going to just click and drag over a portion of this pink circle right here to make it that shade. And then I want to get rid of those black outlines by holding shift and clicking on this little X down here. And I'll go to the select tool. And I'll, where it says uh, lower selection to the bottom, just go ahead and click on that and send that to the bottom. Then we can take the red copy of this word and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And that's basically what we're going to do for the rest of these objects. We're just going to do these with each individual letters alternating between the colors with the word freely here. So I'll click on the letter Y, hold shift, click on the red letter Y and go to extensions, generate from path, extrude. And again, polygons, go ahead and click apply. Close out of that, click on this object, go to the dropper, just press D on the keyboard to grab that. And I'll make this one pink as well. And then I'll hold shift, click the X, go to the select tool and send that to the back like that. Now we can delete the letter Y. Now I'll do this one more time here with the letter L just, just, to, help get the, uh, just to help get it in your memory. Click on the letter L, hold shift, click on the other letter L so we have them both selected. Extensions, generate from path, Extrude, go ahead and click Apply, close out of that, click on this object, grab the dropper, make this one, uh, this bluish greenish shade down here, get rid of the black outline by holding Shift and clicking the X, go back to the Select tool, lower this to the bottom, and then we can get rid of the letter L. So I'll just go ahead and do this to the rest of these letters uh, real quick, alternating between the colors, and I'll catch up to you when I'm done. Okay, so I've completed doing the extrude function on all of the individual letters. And one thing I forgot to mention is that when you're going through these colors, we're going to exclude this tan shade right here because we're going to use this as the background. So I'm just, I just went through it uh, and alternated through these four colors, the pink, blue, orange, and green. Then I went pink, blue again, just rotating through all those. So that's what I would recommend doing as well. And uh, once, once, we, uh, once we've finished with that, we want to take this original pink one down here. And again, just make sure that this is at the very bottom. And what I want to do now is I want to click on, uh, let's, let's click on the word draw right here, and then hold shift and click on each of the letters of the word freely right there. And then we'll group that all together. So that's one object like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the background now. So I'm going to grab the squares and rectangles tool, and I'm just going to hold control and shift to create a perfectly symmetrical square like that. And I'll grab the dropper. I'll make that this tan shade over here. Grab the select tool. And I'm just going to take this and I want to send this to the bottom now. And then I want to hold shift and click on this draw freely word and just center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis like that. Click off of it to deselect everything. Let me move this out of the way. Oops, a little too far there. And um, what we could do now is you could either take this square and make it either smaller or either bigger. This will be your background. So like if you're creating an image for like Instagram or something, I would suggest using a perfect square like this. Or if you're using like a header for like a, a like a blog post or something, you might want to go a little wider in width or something like this. The point is that this is going to be your background right here. So set this however you'd like it to be. And once it's set, I'm going to take this square and I'm going to duplicate that by right clicking it and going to duplicate. And, oh, you know what? Let me undo that. Control Z. I first have to click and drag over all of this down here first. All of these objects. Not the background, just these objects. And I want to group them together so it's all grouped together like that. And then I want to click on this square and right click it, go to duplicate. 
Then with that new selection, hold shift, click on our text down here or this whole big object and go to object, clip, set. And that's gonna clip out the image within those borders right there as you see. So the final step would be to add a little bit of a retro texture to this image here. So uh, I also have linked in the description of the video the texture I'll be using. So go ahead and import that as well. I'll go to File, Import, and here it is, RetroTexture.png. And I want to take this and just bring the opacity down about in half so I can see what's beneath it. And I'll take this, hold Shift, click on the square, and center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis. Click off of it to deselect everything. And I want to take this image, just the image here, and hold Control and Shift and scale it down so it's just a little bit bigger than the boundaries of your background. And once we've done that, we can move this out of the way. I'm going to take the opacity. Uh, actually, you know what? I'll just leave the opacity as it is right now. I'll right-click that and go to Duplicate. Hold Shift. Click on the uh, square right there. Center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis. Click off of it to deselect everything. And what I want to do is click on the texture and then hold Shift and Alt and click on it again right where the text is so it grabs both objects. And with both objects selected, I'll bring the opacity all the way up and go to Object, Mask, Set. And that applies that image as sort of like a texture. But the only problem, as you can see here, is it's kind of light. You may like that. That may be good for you. Uh, I think it's personally think it's a little too light. So I'm just going to duplicate that by right-clicking and going to Duplicate. And then I'll take the duplicated copy. Uh, that, that may even be a little too dark. But fortunately, what you could do is adjust the transparency, the opacity over here to how you like it. So I'm going to set it right about somewhere, right about in half is pretty good. We can click off of that. Let me zoom out. And then finally, I'm just going to add a little bit of texture to the background here because the white text kind of blends in with this light background here. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to take this object here. I'm going to right click that and go to duplicate. And I'm going to make this one a little darker. I'm going to use the HSL tab and just slide this row over to the left to make that darker. Uh, let me remove some saturation there. Maybe do something like that. And then I'll send that to the back. And then I'll take this, hold shift, click on the, uh, the square, center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis, bring the opacity all the way up, then go to Object, Mask, Set. And there you pretty much have it. If you want to adjust the colors, you can still change the color on the masked objects, as you can see here. Uh, what I actually want to do is change this color back here. So to do that, uh, I'm going to click on just this foreground object, which you notice you'll have that selected when you see the lighter shade stripe in the bottom corner. And I'll hold Alt to click on the object beneath it. And you'll notice when the darker stripe shows up in the corner there that you have that one selected. So I'll just change that a little bit. Maybe I'll do something like that right there. Pretty subtle. And that should do it for this tutorial. That's how you can go about creating our retro style text using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.